Touching down in Las Vegas for a weekend of fun and relaxation is one of the best feelings in the world. That gets quickly offset when you get hit in the face with a sack of nickels and dimes. It's the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. Hey guys, Ace of Vegas here, and today's video is going over the hidden fees of Las Vegas. Whether you're a Vegas virgin or a Vegas veteran, hidden fees are the pits. No one wants to be nickeled and dimed to death on holiday, and sticker shock can be debilitating. So I'll show you the most common hidden charges and other tricks that hotels in Las Vegas try to get your money with and how to avoid them. Attack of the parking fees. If you only get one word to describe Las Vegas real estate, it would have to be prime. Sadly, even Optimus can't save you from the Vegas Strip being expensive. Even an acre of land can cost over 50 million dollars. So it's no surprise that casino companies want to cash in on the simple act of parking your car. As of late, parking fees on the Las Vegas Strip have been on the rise, with some running upwards of $19 a day for self-parking. And that's not including any fees for valet. To avoid this nasty charge, you may want to consider flying instead of driving into the city of Neon. This may prove difficult for the weekend warriors, so instead make sure you have a player's club card. Most cards above the basic level offer free parking at all affiliated properties, so having MLife Pearl memberships at MGM Grand will get you free parking at Bellagio as well, but almost nothing can save you from the next fee on our list. Resort fees are some of the biggest charges you'll find on a Vegas vacation, even for discounted and complimentary rooms. We've explained resort fees on Ace of Vegas before, so I'll give you an abridged version here. A resort fee is a mandatory, taxable fee that hotels tack on to a room rate. It includes access to certain amenities such as pools, fitness center, and Wi-Fi, so you don't have to pay for these separately. Instead of, you know, offering these things for free with the room rate. It's basically a second room rate in some cases. Now, to avoid this charge, you'll have to jump through a lot of hoops so technically you can't get this waived. You can, however, dispute the charge on your credit card, and if you didn't use the amenities, you can hope that they waive it that way. Alternately, you can choose a resort or hotel that doesn't charge these fees, like the Four Queens downtown. They aren't quite as opulent as some of the higher-end resorts, but at least you'll only have to pay one room rate. Now, this one isn't really a hidden fee, but it surprised me from my first trip to Vegas as a young man. The incidental hold. So for any stay at a hotel resort over two nights, you'll be charged an incidental charge. It's like a deposit of sorts for damages to the room in part, but it's more likely to make sure you're good to cover any charges to your room, such as room service, drinks, or the minibar. We'll talk more about the minibar later. The charge itself is a minimum of $50 a night for budget hotels, $100 for mid to high tier hotels, with some top tiers charging as much as $150. $50 a night. Most of these have a maximum spend of $300 to $500 for a stay though, so don't expect them to put a hold on your entire vacation budget. You can potentially avoid these charges by letting the front desk use a credit card instead of a debit card, and by just paying for everything in cash. But again, it's not so much a fee, it's just them moving money around. So if you're going to charge dinner to your room, they'll use part of the balance and refund you whatever you didn't use. One of my favorite Kenji Yagi videos details him going over the cost of the Vegas minibar, and they're expensive. Each item is a la carte and marked up 5 to 10 times over retail value. I enjoy a nice shot of Jack Daniels, but not enough to buy a single shot for $12, when I could raid the local ABC store and get it for less than 2 Even picking it up and moving the item will get you charged if you don't put it back down in less than 60 seconds, 30 in some cases. But the exorbitant prices aren't the end of it. You can get charged for storing your own items in the mini fridge, up to $75 in a restocking fee. Not a crippling blow to the budget, but certainly one I'd rather not pay. So avoiding this fee is a no-brainer. Just don't touch the damn thing. Don't put anything in the minibar. Don't look at the minibar. Don't even say minibar. Treat it like Fight Club. Now, I know I just said no more mini bar talk, so let's just talk about the fridge. The mini fridge comes standard in a lot of rooms, but certain hotel chains like MGM have cut down on this basic amenity. So, in a room that does not come standard with either a full size fridge or a mini fridge, you have to call down for one and pay upwards of $25 a night additional just for the privilege of having a place to cool your drinks from the drugstore. There are easy ways to avoid this fee. The first one is to book a room that has a fridge. Most off strip properties have one, and so do a lot of Caesars properties. Even the Treasure Island basic room features a mini fridge. Signature at MGM Grand, while slightly off-strip, featured a full kitchenette and full-size fridge free of charge. But if those options aren't available to you, then consider purchasing a styrofoam cooler from the local Walgreens, filling it with ice from the ice machine, and storing your snacks in there. 
So maybe you've given up on figuring out food in your room and you just want to get dinner and drinks downstairs in the steakhouse. It's Vegas tradition, right? Well, double check your bill. You may experience a CNF fee. The CNF fee or franchise fee is an extra 5% charge added to your bill. Industry outsiders aren't entirely clear on what it does, but we do know that it's taxable and it's virtually unavoidable. How can you avoid this insidious fee? Well, often you can't. The menu typically has the CNF fee in very fine print towards the bottom of the menu. If you see that, cancel your order, and then threaten to walk out. You'll either get the fee waived and can continue dinner, or you can just make a stink, leave, and hopefully deter others who would otherwise be doomed to the same fate. If it isn't listed on the menu and shakes you down towards the end, it might be wise to involve management. Then you can get the fee waived. It is only 5%, but on the naturally marked up resort restaurant prices, that can add up very quickly even over a short three-day holiday. <laughs> Honestly, this is the same as the last fee, only for nightclubs. The venue fee applies mainly to VIP and bottle service at these clubs, although what's another 7% on top of a $4,000 bottle of Merlot? Easiest way to avoid this fee? Don't go to a club, and certainly, don't drink there. Not so much a fee as a tax, really. The live entertainment tax is around 9%, and it's applied to all sorts of shows. Cirque shows, concerts, and all sorts of live performances with an entry fee. Since it's a tax and not a fee, you can't avoid this one at all, unless you choose not to see a show in Vegas. But, where's the fun in that? Taxis get you in two different ways, especially from the airport. Taxi drivers can smell a Vegas virgin right away, and they know exactly how to get money out of you. This is an oldie, but a good one to know. Avoid the long haul. A long haul is when a driver takes an extremely, let's say, scenic route in hopes of getting a larger fee and proportional tip out of you. On top of that, expect your bill to include a $2 airport surcharge in addition to an up to $3 credit card charge. God forbid you fly in and want to take a taxi. Now, this will be a considerably easier fee to avoid. The best way to avoid it if you're going cheaper, take public transport like the bus, a hotel shuttle if your hotel has some available, or just book your own lift. If you're feeling so inclined, you can book a limo privately too. It's more expensive than a taxi, but if you're gonna overpay, overpay in style. And that's all the tips I have for you today here, Spinners and Sharks. Hopefully it'll save you a few bucks on your next Vegas trip. If it does, I'd appreciate a like, and also feel free to subscribe if you want to hear from me again. Until next time then, Ace of Vegas is signing out, wishing you strong hands and happy spending you guys.